medical council uh, was uh, uh, appointed uh, according to the CAP 253 of the Health Act, which was uh, which came into force, the new one came into force last year, 2019, on the 17th of May, signed, signed by uh, the President. The mandate of the Council is to regulate the practice of medicine, dentistry, and health institutions. In the Kenya Medical Practitioners and Dentist Council, it's purely anchored on the providing efficient, effective, and accessibility of world-class regulatory service to our customers. Meaning that uh, our department is customer-centric, whereby we address all the matters which are related to the functions of the mandate of the council. The department is created in a manner that we receive every customer and we are not judgmental of anyone who is even aggrieved. We have the patience to listen, to address the issue which we can. If we are not able to address the matter on the first level on the customer care, we escalate it to the next level whereby we give it to the technical support. The customer department basically is the brain of the council, not only one department because the first department might be good to offer your services, but once it is escalated to the next level also, it needs someone who is handling your issues also to have the skills of handling the customer. The administration is the brain behind our organization or any other organization that, that translates its functions uh, and reflects the reactions of others by ensuring the flow of work, the smooth operations of the councils are run. The key role that the administration does to fulfill the council's role is basically to plan, to coordinate, and then to implement the decisions of what the council has put in place to ensure everything is done efficiently and effectively. For the admin to, uh, to accomplish its task, usually it's actually about teamwork. And most of our heads of department, the staff from the support, they've actually supported us greatly. Because you cannot actually achieve any role as one. It's about teamwork. The human resource department in the council was uh, actually established in the year 2017, uh, fully operationalized, I would say, 2017, and it uh, stood out as uh, on its own. Um, and uh, mainly the purpose or the function of the human resource department in, as you know, in any organization or uh, widely in any organization is uh, basically uh, human resource planning in conjunction with other uh, departmental uh, main heads and uh, this involves recruitment uh, of qualified and competent staff to do various uh, uh, Functions again and uh, help the council fulfill its mandate. And uh, in that, the human resource the department is involved or expected to do the proper induction once uh, the staff has been uh, recruited, uh, proper or appropriate deployment so that they can also carry out their. Uh, uh, role as prescribed in the appointment, uh, the, the, the staff uh, uh, role as prescribed in their appointment letters uh, because one is always uh, is hired for a certain role and uh, once somebody is hired uh, you deploy to the various, uh, to the relevant department and uh, so that they can take up the, their work. The Human Resource Department, again, is also uh, concerned with the 
safety, uh, occupational safety in the workplace uh, to ensure that every uh, officer or the work environment is safe. Uh, we, of course, there is no job uh, without reward. So the issue of uh, reward and sanctions uh, comes along. And uh, that means payroll uh, matters. You have to ensure uh, a payroll is, uh, is done. Every officer is paid appropriately uh, in every month. Um, and the human resource is also concerned with the setting out terms and conditions of service uh, so that uh, uh, officers feel safe. The requirement is that all councils and boards uh, in the medical fraternity should be aligned with Mogozo. And this is what our, the new council uh, was constituted in reference to. And we, are, we saw our, our, uh, our council, which was previously a board, reduced from a membership of 19 to the membership of the current uh, nine. And the representation of, the, of this council is quite uh, comprehensive and it is wide in such that it's not only made of uh, medical professionals. Yes, we have representation from uh, the, the medical fraternity, the uh, Kenya Medical Association, Kenya Dental Association, the uh, representative from the deans of the universities, and we have representation from finance, and then the Kenya Human Rights Commission, and the, uh, the Kenya private hospitals. For the first time, we have representation from the oral health uh, uh, practitioners, the oral health, uh, something that has never happened. You need to have the, the, the person you are, uh, you are taking care of, that's the patient or other people who are unhealthy, they should be our centre of interest. And when you have a, someone from the Human Rights uh, Commission, you're making sure that at no one time are you actually putting that at the back, it's always at the front. And this is why, uh, not just even in this medical council, whichever institution or organization that deals with health, we must always remember that we put our patients first. This council was uh, appointed, uh, 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 gazetted in January. I think it was January 11th. And uh, then we, we had an inauguration in February, uh, where we also went through a bit of corporate governance by Mogoza. And the thing is, uh, our council is, is uh, kind of led and uh, we look at, uh, we reference our strategic plan. We do have a strategic plan for the council. And this strategic plan has several pillars. And so I would like to actually just quickly highlight some of our pillars. We have that, this, the service delivery excellence pillar. And this is what looks at effectiveness, efficiency, professionalism, and a world-class regulatory authority. That's what we hope to achieve, or that's what is our mandate, or that's what we aim to actualize, yeah? Then regulatory enforcement. We should, we are aligned to other regulatory bodies as well, and we work together with other regulatory bodies to be able to achieve our mandate. And our strategic goal is to ensure quality health care uh, through regulating of training of our health professionals and registration, licensing, and then inspecting and uh, uh, the professional practice. So that is very key for this council. This is a very unusual time. Of course, we know about the COVID. The COVID hit us uh, as it hit the rest of the world. We came in so in Wuhan and other parts of the world, Europe. It came a, a, a little earlier last year. We got the first case in March. And again, this is also when now we've just, we were, the new council was just within one month of having been inaugurated. So honestly, there was no, no thinking. They hit the ground running and it, into a tree support uh, the, the rest of the, the health sector in the, the COVID response. And it was in that light that the, the, the PS and the Minister of Health uh, directed that uh, the council becomes a center the Centre for the Coordination of Quarantine and Isolation uh, uh, Activities and Facilities in this country. Just around that time, uh, it was announced that people returning to the country would be uh, quarantined so that we can protect 
and the rest of us and even them and their families. So that, with that in mind, we were tasked to identify uh, uh, quarantine facilities, both government and private. And at the same time, start, we started working on isolation facilities and identifying iso uh, health facilities. Because amongst those people, if you remember, and you can actually go back to our data, all the flights that came in, uh, and we, all these people we uh, were uh, quarantined, they were all tested. We did find quite a number of these people were positive and we had to evacuate uh, with, together with the, the support of the Ministry of Health and the, the teams from the Ministry of Health, of Health, we evacuated most of the positive people to the health facilities where they, and we say luckily enough, most of them had mild or asymptomatic uh, disease. So a good, num good number of them recovered. We need now to uh, participate in making sure that the isolation centers in the counties are really up to, uh, to par in making sure that patients who go in there don't end up dying. So they have the, the, the proper management, the health professionals that are trained, and also we must know that. You know, as we said, this virus gets everybody. Who, remember who is on the front line? The health workers. So we need to know, even us as a regulator of health, that our health professionals are well protected. This is what is life now. This is what the country is facing now. And this is what, as a council, we've just been tasked now to head uh, what is called the, the te a technical team of experts that's being rolled out to go and support the COVID response in the counties. So that's really uh, some, uh, one of the things that uh, we need. We are very much involved. The community health workers, they, they an engagement, even at the community level, it's ongoing. We have over, in all of the counties, if you uh, get into the data of the reports coming, which is now available from the Ministry of Health website, we have several thousands of community health workers who have been trained. So that capacity is so key. And even as we go out now to, to support uh, the counties, those are some of the things we'll be looking at. How well are these community health workers working? How really engaged are they at the community level? You talked about home-based care. You see, if a community health worker is known to the community, so the community is very comfortable with them. If I go to your community and start asking who here has diabetes, who has hypertension, or who has cancer, nobody will answer me. But in you, you now, as in that community, everybody knows you. So they will be able to tell the, that household they have uh, somebody who needs rehabilitation, that household needs somebody who needs palliative care. And so you in the community are, hard, are better hard in helping these people and getting to know when to get the health, other health uh, card to come in and help or when to refer. So to me that is very key. A healthy nation is a wealthy nation. So if we take care of our people uh, from the health aspect, everything else will fall into place. At the moment, and for quite a while, healthcare delivery in this, in this country is, has not been free. Even in the public facilities, has not been free. They've, we've tried, the government has tried to make it affordable. But universal health coverage, hopefully, uh, with encompassing primary health care, with the support of NHIF, I think that we can achieve it. I think the president has given us the goodwill. It is upon us, the rest of us, everybody else in the health sector, to make sure we actualize this. And I don't think it is, we have to take and, and take advantage of that goodwill. It is always good when the policymakers give you almost an avenue to do, so we cannot blame the government now that, uh, or we cannot blame the policymakers that we have not. We've been told universal health coverage is something that is, needs to become, we have even almost given a deadline and timelines. So we must, as a, now as the, the council, we are supporting the, the Ministry of Health and we're supporting the government in this, in that we will want to make sure, even that universal health is quality health. So that when you go to the uh, level two, level three facilities, they do offer quality health that you can actually, it, it uh, falls within the universal health. Uh, a healthy environment will increase the productivity. So if we make sure that our people are working in a, there's, there's no such a thing as stress-free environment. 
but help people cope with the stresses of every day-to-day -day life. And not just the fact that they appear to work every morning, even what happens after they go home. So it is important that we have a sector, and that's why we have uh, human resource, we have customer relations. Even, we are not only serving people outside, we should also serve ourselves. So we must find out how the people who are working here to serve others, how they are in their workplace and even at home. And this to me, I think every uh, a, a corporate or public or private sector, if we address this, we would get a better output from the people who work within those organizations. And to me, that is something I would want. In my next, in my three years here, I hope that is what to achieve. And I can maybe go out saying that I left a healthier environment than how I found it. And we may be having excellent services, but if people don't know how to access it, what good is it? So we need to make sure that people know, and that's very, very important to me. One of the other things is, at least I know we, what we have been able to do, the council, the, uh, 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 engaging our stakeholders. We talk about we are regulating medical, dental uh, uh, professionals. We need to be in tandem with what they are doing also in their organizations. We need to, them, they need to know, and then we need to speak to each other. And it is through communication again. So our stakeholders to, uh, to me are very strong, uh, very important because they will strengthen and also contribute to how we, we uh, uh, perform our duties as well. And this is why we even have, have that through with the various uh, uh, committees. You know, we have uh, uh, four major committees in the council. We have the committee for uh, disciplinary and ethics. We have the one for uh, training and registration and human resource licensing. We have the audit. And what all these committees, what they do, and as you said, we said we have, we've already been reducing the numbers. So we would likely be on a regular basis be co-opting other professionals from the same stakeholders and associations to come and help us to be able to actualize our mandate. So when we are engaging, it is so easy to, or for us to know who really also has passion in making sure that we deliver our mandate. And these are the people. And we've already seen it's already working. And then enhancing the working relationship between the council and the secretariats and the staff to us is very important because one can't work with the, without the other. And it's, to me, I think it's that kind of harmonization of how we work that will make us uh, succeed. That door is open. It's not. I'm not saying it's open for you to come and just complain. Come and give me ideas. If you find there's something that could be, do it, be done better, because everybody has a role to contribute this, to, this, to the success of this council. Walk into my office, come and leave me a small note and say, Chair, do you think we can try this? Do you think we can do this, maybe this way? Or this area is not going right. Maybe if we try this, don't let me come and tell, tell you, Diana, let's do this. No, you tell me, share. I think we'll be more effective if we send this message out. The council is established under CAP 253 laws of Kenya. The mandate of the council is to regulate the practice of medicine, dentistry, and healthcare institutions, which include hospitals, medical centers, dispensaries, medical clinics, and dental clinics. The uh, council has over the years since the establishment in 1978 uh, been involved in various activities geared towards improvement of healthcare in this country. In particular, the Act has been reviewed uh, several times in order to accommodate the changing demands of medical regulation in the country. In 1979, when the Act was enacted, it, it was purely for the dental and medical practice. In the year 2000, the amendments that were carried out gave the council mandate of re registering and licensing 
private and mission health institutions. But the major amendment of this act is the one that was enacted in, in 2019, which turned the then medical uh, board into a council. Among the major amendments of that uh, year include the composition of the council. Previously, we used to undertake elections for council members. Now, uh, the new amendment gave the president power to appoint the chair, and I'm glad to say that the current chair is the first chair of the council appointed by His Excellency the President. And then the other members of the council are nominated by various organizations subject to which the cabinet uh, secretary chooses uh, one among the nominees that are submitted. The Kenya Medical Association, the Kenya Dental Association, the uh, Community Oral Health Officers Association, the uh, universities which offer medical and dental training, and the uh, Kenya Human Rights Commission are among organizations that nominate a member each to the Council of Appointment uh, by the, uh, the Cabinet Secretary. The Kenya Human Rights Representative uh, is a representative of the public, and therefore, uh, the uh, non-medical representation in the council is derived from the Kenya Human Rights Commission. Uh, the mandate and the functions of the council, one is to regulate the training of doctors, medical and dental practitioners, and community oral health officers. Towards this end, the council is involved in the approval of medical schools and approval of course content. That is the core curricula for every university that wishes to train doctors in this country. The council is also involved in monitoring and evaluating the quality of training, including participating in university exams that are offered to the final year students. The other mandate of the council is to register qualified medical and dental practitioners who are trained uh, from within the country and from within the East African community. The ones that are trained from institutions that we have given reciprocal recognition within the East African community are given reciprocity by being registered or given permission to go for internship uh, pre-registration internship uh, without being subjected to exams. Doctors who train outside the country are subjected to pre-registration examination. Those who have done a postgraduate training are subject to peer assessment upon which they are registered. So that function of registration of doctors is undertaken by the council. The other aspect of registration is that one of health institutions. So all health institutions, according to CAP 253, Section 15, the council has the mandate to register health institutions which have the capacity to offer inpatient services or multidisciplinary services, except clinics that are run by nurses and those that are run by clinical officers as standalone uh, clinics. The council also issues licenses. So we have got two licenses for doctors. One is general practice license for general practitioners. The other one is specialist practice license for uh, specialist practitioners. So in this, in this aspect, any uh, doctor who is registered appropriately or is able to download their um, licenses from the system. So the only time we expect doctors to come to the council is when they are applying for their first registration uh, certificate because they we require to examine their original documents. And the second time we require them to come here is when they physically collect their permanent registration licenses. All the other services are done online.
unless a doctor wishes to come and visit. The rest of the documentation can be submitted to the council only. The council also undertakes inspections. And in this aspect, we inspect singular, uh, we carry out singular inspections into uh, health institutions where we go as a council. We inspect clinics run by doctors. We inspect hospitals across the country. And we inspect internship training centers, hospitals that uh, do offer internship for doctors, dentists, and uh, uh, community oral health officers. The other function of the council, which we undertake rigorously, is to carry out disciplinary uh, inquiries. We have certain committees in the council. Uh, the committees of the council are uh, three, which are key. The first one is uh, training, assessment, registration, and human resources committee. This committee is the one which deals with the first bunch of inspection of medical schools, uh, approval of curriculums, registration of doctors, registration of health institutions. And also deals with the human resource matters, including the issue of internship placement. The other committee is inspections and licensing committee. This is a committee that inspects uh, institutions across the country together with other boards and councils, the committee carries out joint inspections. We do have a committee uh, known as uh, Disciplinary and Ethics Committee. This is a committee that carries out inquiries into cases of alleged, and I use the word alleged because people come here and complain uh, saying that they have been wronged and therefore those are allegations until or unless they are proven otherwise. And then we do have Audit and Risky Committee that audits our systems, and that's a committee that oversees uh, our operations, our systems, and so on and so forth. Uh, the, the, the discharge of these functions through the committees and through department heads uh, is answerable to the uh, full council. So among other functions of the council, of course, would be advisory because we advise the national and county government on matters pertaining to health care regulation. And uh, all the work that is done by this council is processed through committees, goes to the full council, which meets every quarter. The council has got various departments. And uh, we have the admin, administration department, which deals with the general administration of the council. We have a registration department, which deals with the registration of doctors and health institutions. We have the department of um, legal services, which deals with uh, matters pertaining to legal, uh, uh, pertaining to medical malpractice. And we do have uh, the Department of, Co of Corporate Affairs, which basically assists in uh, uh, matters pertaining to uh, litigation, matters pertaining to general legal administration of the council, uh, and so on. Then we do have, of course, a procurement committee, I mean procurement department, that deals with the uh, procu uh, procurement of goods and services. We do have the finance department, that deals with financial operations. We do have the human resources department, which deals with human uh, resource development, recruitment, placement, and so on. And we do have uh, the ICT department, which adequately supports the operations of this council but through uh, information technology. And we also have the department of licensing, which deals with the licensing for uh, doctors. And of course, finally, we also have the Department of Compliance, which deals with the, uh, ensuring that uh, inspections are carried out in uh, various institutions in the country. Mm -hmm.